Hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. I'm Jade Harrell, and I'm joined by the magnificent Jamie Valentine Doby. And I'm loving this one-on-one, -on -one, Jamie. Yes, I don't think we've done this before. Never. We're doing a it. duet. I'm here for it. <laughs> and shout out to our, our other co-hosts, and we're thinking about y'all. But Jamie, what are you loving right now? And I know you've got the good stuff. I follow it closely. I am loving, you know, St. Louis summer. Like I really am. It's just been an amazing kind of journey of light for me. But um, the support in the city, I think for me, like from 314 Day to now and all these magnificent events and you know, we have St. Louis City Soccer, the Surge, um, all of these exciting things. And of course, the Cardinals and so many other great, great things, track. right? Yeah. But I feel like we're a more collective city. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that journey is not ending. So that's what I'm loving. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the loop. And what are you loving about this leg of your leap of faith and entre entrepreneurial journey? I'm loving it. Um, I am full time with my co working space and podcast studio. So, um, so it, it's just it, it's it's a space that was opened to be intentional to support those business owners of color, um, and 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 we're here. We're here to support. We are are not anti anything. We're just being intentional about serving a demographic that has been forgotten um, in so many areas. But I think the St. Louis community as a whole has supported us and I'm here to support St. Louis and um, just going through my motto. Like I, I'm, I'm going in a no networking, we're only connecting. No networking, only connecting. So what's your call out, your, your invitation to those that are looking for help and need to, where can they find out more on that, Jamie? Uh, they can find me at jamiedolby.com and everything that I'm doing will connect you. So And, and not just networking, but connecting us. Connecting. Well, we are so happy to be connecting to our next guest. When we return, we're learning how a young woman went from reigning on the basketball court to reigning as a pageant queen. Oh, we've got a treat for you when we come back. Stay with us. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Why do you not get me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. And welcome back to Let's Talk. Our next guest started out her career on the hardwood floor as a player for the St. Louis Surge basketball team before transitioning to color commentating the games for the team. After fulfilling a lifelong dream of being a news reporter, she decided to venture out and try something new. Living by the mantra, no limits, this young woman certainly had no limits when it came to entering the Miss St. Louis USA competition in her last year of eligibility and winning it all. Please help us welcome Miss No Limit Missouri USA. Michaela McGee, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. This is such an honor to be with you all today. <laughs> The honor is totally ours. And there's so many questions I have for you, uh, but I'll start with the idea of no limits. You have been an accomplished athlete, journalist, and I'm sure a ton of other great accomplishments. What does this crown hold for you? What is the power underneath that? Well, you know, getting into pageantry was something that I never really expected in my lifetime. But just like you said, and I like that, no limits to Miss Missouri USA. I like that. I'm, I'm going to coin that. <laughs> but I am at a stage in my life and me being a little bit more seasoned than a lot of these girls who are competing in these pageants, I really have come to that realization that I do not want to place limits on myself. And not only place limits on myself, but not place limits on God. Because what he wants to do in my life and what he can do through my life is so much more powerful and and beyond what I can even imagine 
And you can see it through my story, you know, starting out an athlete who was running around playing three sports my entire life, going on to play division one basketball, going on to play professionally, now stepping into this brand new world of pageantry. I am a walking example that you do not have to limit yourself to boxes or to, or to status quo or to whatever you think society wants you to be. You can step out, branch out, try new things and walk in confidence that you can be successful in those things. Indeed, and what you've proven is that even though there are boxes that you can break those seams wide open and you have, how have some of those skills from playing three sports, being a D1 athlete, the pressure and work of that translated into pageantry? I credit my background in sports so much to the success that I've had in pageantry because you learn how to prepare and you also build character and leadership through athletics, which is something that I promote all the time as women in sports. I am doing everything I can to make sure that young girls have the opportunity to explore their athletic ability. But going back to what you said, I know how to sit down and make a game plan and execute that game plan. So that's the exact same approach I took when I was stepping into Miss Missouri USA. I started watching pageants, taking notes. I was able to find a good team around me, you know, people who were able to guide me to the right places and to the right things. I was able to listen to myself. I had a good support system. And those are all the things that athletics have brought into my life and the things that I applied on this journey. Love that. What's, I've, I've heard discipline and, and so many great things come from sports, right? How did you make that transition or what, what, what caused you to even say, you know what, I've done this, I've done that, this, this, and you have all these boxes that you've checked off, but you said that pageantry wasn't on the list. What took you um, to that space? Again, I will give all the credit to God on that. He really guided my steps into this realm that I had no idea that I would ever touch. I actually got to meet the previous title holder, Joy Forrest, who is amazing. I met her last summer at the Bomberito Automotive 500 race over in Illinois. And whenever I met her, we just, you know, we clicked, had a good conversation. We began following each other on social media, became friends from afar, you know, via the internet. Um, but I saw her post the application and after I saw that, I just couldn't get it off my mind. And I just started going into prayer about it and really sitting in myself. Like you said, once you've done so many things in your life and you've checked so many boxes, I wanted to check my intentions for doing this pageant. Was it because I just wanted another accolade on my list of accolades or was it because there was something deeper to it? And thankfully, you know, through play, prayer and self-reflection, I was able to see there was something deeper. It was an inner desire to want to be a leader in my community, to want to give back to my community, to represent people in a positive way of all colors, shapes, and backgrounds. So to be that person and to step into this role of Miss Missouri USA have been an absolute blessing and an honor. And I do not take this responsibility lightly whatsoever. Mm. It, there, with, with this high visibility role and, and presentation there, do you get a sense of responsibility for community and how you represent, um, especially when it comes to the box and standards of beauty that existed in pageants prior, you're bringing something different. Do you hold that as a point of responsibility and, and how do you use it? You know, the beautiful thing that you just mentioned is that we are starting to see a lot more diversity in pageants. We are seeing women of all different shapes, sizes and colors, hair types, textures, step into this world. And it's been such a beautiful thing. And though I 100% recognize and honor and appreciate the fact that I'm black, the fact that I am an athlete, I come in with a little bit more of a muscular body tone than some of these women, you know, I'm 5'11", I'm a big girl, you know? <laughs> like, I respect that and I appreciate that about myself, but I also think the biggest thing to remember to promote and to hold true is that you just always have to be yourself, no matter what you're doing or where you're at. And your inner beauty is always going to shine through so much more than your outer beauty. And when your inner beauty shines, your outer beauty is actually even 
even brighter, you know? So I think for anything, though I do hold that responsibility, I want to be a representation for young girls who see me and be like, I can do this too. I want them to more so know that you can do anything that you want to do when you're yourself. And when you're yourself, you're going to fall into the right things that are for you. Jamie, what? did you? I, I did. I was going to say, you talked about um, like the different sizes, shapes, and talked about your, your muscular uh, tone. I think like you see, even though like we, sometimes being thin is not, you know, always healthy. Right. But you, when I see you out at appearances or different things, you always seem healthy and not just healthy in a physical way, healthy in a mental way. And you always have a really great attitude. How has that transition, how has that translated to those that look up to you? Cause I feel like you, you exude a little something different um, from, from, from your typical uh, pageant winner or, or from the stereotype that, that we may have of them. Right. Well, first of all, thank you. That was really nice of you to say. I appreciate that. And I think the fact that this was my first pageant and I've never done pageants in general before. And again, me being on the older side of women who do do pageants, I'm more self-aware, I'm confident. I know exactly who I am. And even though I know that person might change with seasons, like I know who I am, I know what I stand for and what I wanna represent. And thankfully, again, I am grounded in my faith. I have a good support system. And because of athletics, I understand health. You know, I understand my body and the importance of having that mental and physical connection and balance. And so I will never push a body type. I don't think everybody needs to be stick figure. I don't think everybody needs to be thick. You have to do what's healthy for you and what feels good for you. And the scale doesn't matter. It's what you see in the mirror and what you're happy with and how you feel that you can live your best life. And I genuinely believe that. I will promote exercise and healthy eating until the day I die because that's what helps us live longer. But not coming from this pageant world has allowed me to bring a fresh perspective into it. And I also just think a, a fresh take for people to receive because they see someone who they're around, who they've known, who they know has this different background and they can relate to that. Mm -hmm. That is very powerful. And I have a few questions along those lines because you're upholding so much of that vision. What does it take from the inside, from the moment you wake up or the things you do to prepare? But we'll get to that because we have so much to talk about and all these questions, I mean, are really lifting not only me, but certainly whomever's watching. So we are gonna take a quick break. And if you just stay with us, we'll have more with Miss No Limit Michaela McGee when we return. Do you wanna retire like a champ? Just like legendary basketball star, Uncle Drew. Don't do it like that, Uncle Drew. You're already acing the game. You've got your dream ride. Don't be slamming my door. Sorry about that. Uh, you just did the nah. same. Gotta get the boys. Your dream vacation and your dream team. And now you can make your retirement just as legendary. I get buckets. Get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. And welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking with the newly crowned Miss Missouri USA, Michaela McGee, about her journey, her work, her triumph, her struggles, as well as her hope and vision for the crown. Michaela, we were talking about body types and bringing new perspective to pageants. And I, I have to talk to you about the idea of a pageant. Are you able to bring fresh perspective to being compared side by side and lined up in bathing suits and for beauty and for certain things that are all measured along a very thin line and standard. Are you able to affect or change the perspective there that we're presenting a woman who represents Missouri more so than a physical being or icon? Yeah, well, the nature of pageantry is kind of that competitiveness, you know, but I think a perspective that I brought into it, and I think that we're starting to see across pageantry in itself, is it's not necessarily a competition between you and the other women, because everyone who comes in is going to be beautiful. 
Everyone who comes in is going to be talented. Everyone is going to be gifted. They're going to be well-spoken. They're going after this because they think that they're the best for this position, right? Under Crystal Stewart, who is the CEO of Miss USA, that organization, she has taken this approach of pageantry reimagined. And when she says that she genuinely means it, and she is looking for the all around package, not just beauty. And of course, beauty is part of it. It is a beauty pageant, but they want people who want to create effective change, who are doers, who are gonna be actively involved, who seek to have that spotlight on them, but to have that spotlight to shine on other people as well. So I think that's why I was also very drawn to the Miss USA organization, because after researching it and seeing the direction that it's going, it aligned with my morals, it aligned with my values, and it aligned with my vision for what I want to do with my career. So that's why I'm going so hard after this. <laughs> you talked about you talked about change and impact, and we know that you're, um, you started out with the surge in St. Louis, and I feel like the things that Clea Collier and the Surge have done for our region has been all about impact change and really giving back. Can you talk to us more about your time with the Surge and how those two worlds have merged together now? A thousand percent. I love to talk about the St. Louis Surge because Kalia Collier has not only just been a mentor to me, she's been a friend. And she is someone who has really helped put me in position to be where I'm at today. But I will tell you this, I came back home from Florida Gulf Coast University where I was playing my last year of basketball, finishing up my master's degree. And I got back to St. Louis and I didn't really know what my calling was, what my it was. You know, I was still trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing back in St. Louis. So I ended up linking up with Kalia Collier and she offered me a position as the social media and communications intern for the St. Louis Surge. So that's how I got tied in into the realm of the organization. Now I've always been a Surge fan, but now I'm a part of the organization. So from being that intern, I also accepted the dual role of becoming a player. So I started playing for the team while I was their intern as well. I played for them for two years. And then that third year is whenever I started actually working in broadcast. So I switched to a color commentator with the St. Louis Surge my third year, which was last year. Now that I am Miss Missouri USA, I'm obviously taking a little bit of a step back from the basketball aspect, but me and the St. Louis Surge are still partnered up. And we have started this campaign called We Want to Play Too, which is targeted towards girls 14 and under in the St. Louis region to help them stay in sports if they want to. Because what we're seeing is that girls are dropping out at a two time higher rate than boys by the age of 14. And it's not because that they don't want to play. It's not because that they're not good enough. It's because they don't have the resources or the finances to be able to feel comfortable and safe in youth sports. So we are raising monetary donations and also collecting donated items. And that can be sports bras, spandex, deodorant, socks, little things that a lot of us take for granted and don't realize play such a large role in a developing young woman to feel comfortable staying in the athletic field. So my goal is to just keep those doors of opportunity open for whoever wants them because I know the opportunities that sports open for me in my life and I would just hate for anyone to miss out on that if that's what they desire. Mm. That really aligns with your no limits mantra. Let's talk about Mm -hmm. the pressure to play, especially with young women, young women and they're in development. So we get through the first hurdles of resources, but we can't ignore what happened and the heartache of Miss USA, Miss Chesley, Mm -hmm. who one felt pressure uh, externally on how she might look or be received or accepted. And she really dealt with that the emotional and mental toll to play at the level that you're talking about and no limits level. Let's speak to what that takes and how you can help young women with that aspect of their lives. What worked for you? Yeah. Oh, well, just touching base on Chesley Chris real quick. You know, she was someone who I looked up to and admired whenever I first stepped my foot into this pageantry journey. 
Um, she's someone who I saw myself in a lot, not only in appearance, but also in her personality and in her career with what she was doing as a correspondent on E! News. And also with her and an approaching, yeah, and an athlete and her approaching her 30th birthday. Like, I feel like I understand the, the thoughts and processes that she had, because when you grow up so accomplished, and you accomplish so many things, you almost feel like you have to be perfect all the time. And she probably felt that times 20 when she got that Miss USA title and then all eyes are on her. And then she spoke very openly about her struggles with getting older and the, and the beauty standard of how she feel like she always has to look beautiful. You know, I'm not, I was, I'm not in her mind, so I can't necessarily speak for her, but I get where she was coming from. And it's so sad that it had to end the way it did for her, but that doesn't have to be everyone else's fate, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why it is so important that we are taking immense care of our mental health and our physical health. And with it being Mental Health Awareness Month, I want to say that you are not alone if you are struggling with depression or anxiety. I have gone through a season in my life where I was struggling with depression and it did take a lot of prayer and therapy and support from my family and just honestly just taking it day by day and chugging and chugging along. But I beat that season and now I'm in a beautiful flourishing season and that can be your story as well. So I just want to encourage that for everyone, but also the pressures that come not only just with pageantry, but with life, with your job, with athletics, it does take a toll on your mental. And you just have to check in with yourself and really be like, where am I at? I'm a big advocate for mental toughness. And that is something that's developed through your lifetime. You don't just have it. So, I mean, you do, some people have it a little bit, but it's really a skill that's developed. So I just really encourage people to, to, to fight through those negative thoughts and those nasty things that you say to yourself and combat it with like three positive things. That's what I try to do. If I have one negative thought, let's say one day I look in the mirror, I'm like, you know what? You're ugly today. You know what? You are beautiful. You have been working on yourself. You've, you've worked out today. You've taken care of your body. You moved, you know, just little things like that, that start changing your mindset makes such a big difference. Mm, being transformed by the power of our mind. Couldn't be a better tip or skill for a developing woman and one that might be a little seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What's next? I know that there are no limits to anything um, that you can do. What's the next step for you to transition to that Miss USA and how can we all support you? Yes. So next up is Miss USA and they haven't put an exact date out on when that competition is going to be. We are hearing either sometime in September or October. So whenever I get those official days, you know, I'll be passing them your way <laughs> so that we can all be on the countdown together. But right now it's really just about continuing the preparation that you did for Miss Missouri USA and transitioning. So making sure that you're staying mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally stable and fit make sure that you are going out and finding wardrobe. So an evening gown, a swimsuit, interview outfits that you feel confident in that really represent you and your personality. And that's what I'm doing right now, working with my Van Bros and Associates team, who is the organization I'm under right now as we prepare for Miss USA. But ways that you guys can support, I am always looking for sponsorships. So if you are a local yeah. business who would sponsor me on my journey, Pageantry does get expensive. I will be 100% transparent there. And just with the travel and, and shopping and hair and makeup, everything, it just, it becomes a So I have really appreciated my sponsors in Bomberito Automotive, the St. Louis Surge, LTO Pepe and O'Fallon, and also Archway Memorial Chapel for all of the help they've given me so far. But definitely looking for sponsors. Always, always thankful for the prayers and thoughts and just encouraging words that everyone sends. If you want to contact me, if you want me to be in an event for you, I could serve as a host or I could just be a face there. Uh, my email is missmousa2022 at gmail.com. And that's where I handle all of my bookings and appearances. Or if you just want to chat. <laughs> That might be a temporary email and be, need to be replaced by universe at some point. 
you know what? The fact that you skipped to universe was everything because I received that and we're putting it in existence. <laughs> yes, because there's a world of women, young women and old women alike, or seasoned women, that really could use your bright light, your message, and your example. Michaela, you have been an incredible model for us all. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> so we touch and agree in faith. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. But before we say goodbye, please tell everyone again where they can learn more about you, reach out by email, be able to sponsor, and about the organization. Yes. So you can always follow me on my personal Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter account, which is at Michaela McGee, M-I-K-A-L-A-M-C-G-H-E-E. Or follow the official Miss Missouri USA Instagram and Facebook, which is Real Miss M O USA. If you are looking to do an event, have me host, or would like to be a sponsor, you can email me at Miss M O USA 2022 at gmail.com. Fantastic, Michaela. God bless and success in every endeavor. Stay with us. There's more. Let's talk when we return. We'll be right back. Jamie, I know this had to hit close to home. I felt very inspired and encouraged and enlightened by Michaela, especially the idea that strength and beauty can go and exist together in the same space. I did. And I felt like you poured a word into her as she poured a word into us. Um, and I know that everyone won't be able to see that, but hopefully you can catch Jade on social to, um, to, to really catch what we missed um, backstage. But also, Jade, you have a personal connection because your daughter with basketball and how is that as a parent of an athlete to really be able to see somebody strive like that? I needed to see it in that way. Same way she saw Chesley in herself. I see Michaela and Chesley in herself in my daughter who achieves at a high level and it's on to the next and on to the next and on to the next. I'm so glad that the coach is someone that I can believe in, another Black woman. She'll be surrounded by positive women uh, and influence at that level. I needed it to know as a mom, she's going to be all right. And that uh, the things that she was exposed to and the connections that she has will carry her through. And faith, faith Absolutely. along the way has been the resounding tone. And what are you loving? Ah. Uh, this is a hard season, but I'm loving the season change in our whole lives, I think. <laughs> but we don't have time for that because I'll, I'll, I'll go on and on about gratitude. So I, I'm just loving the way that God continues to bring us forward and keep us in care. So we have to thank Miss Michaela, Miss Missouri USA, who has joined us and blessed us with her spirit. And though the show might be over, you can always find us. We'll be talking on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or visit us at stltv.net. I'm Jade Harrell. For Jamie Valentine, No Limit Dolby. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Let's Talk. girl and next week to play d1 basketball at umkc um, so you oh, ladies have had a tremendous impact on her life and she's also very beautiful <laughs> and strong but she deals a lot with she was really gassed i talked to she deals with that idea of well how do i just show up i gotta fight so hard just to get to the court of mm -hmm. life of games of of environments um yeah so this is that's really a great